Yo, sorry. I gotta use this weird, creepy filter. It's, it's just dark. So, before I get into it, someone named Maya left me a comment and then erased it, unfortunately. But I could still see it. She recommended to me a song by a band called Typo Negative and suggested that it might not be my type of music. Little does she know, I actually used to know and was personally acquainted with the singer of that band, Peter Steele. Um, not that I, not like he was my buddy or anything. I was 13 years old. Brief time in high school in Brooklyn, New York, where I moved back and forth between Arizona and New York many times in my childhood. And uh, Peter Steele lived in Midwood, Brooklyn, and uh, was next door neighbors to one of my best friends. And um, I talked to him a handful of times and used to see him almost every day. A uh, very nice individual. And yes, I was a big fan of his music. I'm a big metalhead, still am. And uh, his music, typo negative music, influenced a lot of my own songs. Especially a lot of the dark gothic overtones and shit. A lot of my own songs have a, you know, kind of more of a Christian twist to them and are a little bit more hopeful than the really dark stuff he would sing about. But, yeah, and uh, my neighbor, who was very good friends with Peter Steele, I mean my friend, who was his neighbor is what I mean, uh, so much so that they, uh, his family attended his funeral. So, yeah, I've been to countless, upon countless shows and uh, was a serious metalhead uh, with the band shirts and all that back in the day. So, yeah, my, uh, to answer your question, it's my type of music. <laughs> but I'm getting off topic here. So the movie Knowing... A uh, few very important key points that I missed. First and foremost, the parallels with iPad Go 2. And yes, there are. Absolutely. Um, the Lotus Flower, for example. Um, the alien spacecraft. So basically what happens, right, is that there's a massive solar flare and it's interesting how the sequence of events unfolds is that things started to get really bright and hot and then there's this um basically aurora borealis during the day where do we hear that before and uh then everything started catching fire and then eventually like the whole world just burned up and so these alien craft like would take these special children, the chosen children, right, to uh, this new Earth. And uh, the ships looked exactly, exactly. The movie's free on YouTube. You could go to the ending and take a look for yourself what the ships look like. And exactly like an unfolding lotus flower, um, which we know is one of the main themes of iPad Go 2, uh, being the lotus flower and it being representative of a new birth, a rebirth, and unfolding. But it, there's more. We have a lot of bucks, a lot of buck deer specifically. It was not just one or two. I specifically kept an eye out on this stuff. Horned buck deer in um, in the movie um, in random places, like they would just be like running behind Nicolas Cage. There would be in paintings on walls. Uh, in the end, there's one that's like super obvious, and it was so intentional that they they put this there. There's just no way that it was an accident. They had a painting of a buck deer. When Nicolas Cage and goes hugs his dad and mom and family before they all die, the camera like just zooms in, like focuses on this deer. 
Well, we know there's a buck deer in Pedgo too, alongside a white rabbit. Now, are you gonna ask me, are there white rabbits in the knowing? Yes, there are. Actually, the children, <laughs> this is funny, were given two white rabbits, presumably buck rabbits. They were given two rabbits to, to take with them on this new earth. Now, how, how is this not relevant? How is there no connection? Like, I, I see this movie, and I know in the depths of my soul that there is some kind of connect. Like, it connects with me. Like, there's truth being spoken here. Um, and I've always felt, like, in the depths of my soul that iPad Go To had some kind of alien ET connection. Like, it's much more than just uh, about a war or an attack or... Even even the quote unquote antichrist, there's more going on here, um, and um, I think this movie kind of parallels what I've been thinking in the depths of my soul this whole time. Um, and it's interesting that the the aliens presented in the movie were these Nordic, blonde-haired, blue-eyed types, um, because we've been hearing so much about them, right? Um, it's just interesting to think about. I recommend, uh, if you didn't see the movie, to still watch it, even if I just basically ruined it. <laughs> it's still worth watching. Um, Nicolas Cage is a weird character. He either plays terribly as an actor, or he's phenomenal. Like, there's no in-between. Like, he's either crappy as hell, or he's great. <laughs> Which is just funny to me. Um, those are my thought, guys. And then one more thing is that, um, again, 2028 uh, seems very, very plausible and realistic. The mo most important thing I want to say about that is that it seems realistic. Instead of inching our way day by day, month by month, waiting for some rapture, blah, blah, blah. Uh... A realistic time frame I was thinking 2024 that's what I'm going for but uh, 2028 um, that time that entire time frame is is when I think certainly this solar event will play out certainly I am I feel pretty confident about that um, of course unless something drastically changes and uh, some kind of great epiphany or whatever and the planet is saved but we'll see how that plays out maybe it already was saved i don't know but i don't think so